Hiya and welcome to day 20 of the 24 day physics extravaganza and what I have here is I've got an interesting question on uh, atomic density and atomic sort of size okay so with this is going to be uh, very much a second year question but quite interesting nonetheless have some really easy marks that you can pick up so a scattering experiments are used to investigate the nuclear of gold atoms so rather than scattering uh, in one experiment, alpha particles, all of the same energy, so monoenergetic, are incident on the foil made from a single isotope of gold. State the main interaction when an alpha particle is scattered by a gold nucleus. So what's happening in alpha with a charge of positive 2 is basically being smacked into a 79 electron positive or thing, and you get a repulsion. So state the main interaction. So it's an electrostatic interaction, okay? So this is important, it's electrostatic interaction. You could mention, of course, Coulomb's law, they will allow it, but the interaction is electrostatic, okay? Um, and that's important because it's one of the three main interactions, you know, strong, weak, and electrostatic, this, or electromagnetic. Um, uh, so I'm going to say electrostatic. You can say electromagnetic too on this one, okay? Just for one mark, nice, easy one marker there. The gold foil is then replaced with the uh, another foil of the same size made from isotopes of gold. Uh, nothing else in the experiment has changed. Explain whether or not the scattering distribution of the monoenergetic alpha particles remains the same. So you're not changing the actual positive, you, you saw gold. So you still have the same amount of protons. So therefore, you're still going to get the same amount of repulsion. So explain whether or not the distribution, so it will remain the same. So it is the same because the charge on the gold is the same even with different isotopes, okay? So this is important to realize is that you won't, the reason it scatters is because it's all about charge. If you get isotopes of gold, they have the exact same charge as gold. Okay, therefore the repulsion is going to be exactly the same. And therefore you're still going to get exactly the same scattering uh, amount because the um, potential is the same. Okay, so data from the alpha particle scattering is used on elements other than gold. And our scientists relate R to the nuclear number A. This is the relationship. The relationship is R equals R naught A to the third. Use information from the graph to show that R naught is approximately 1.4 times 10 to the minus 15. So the first thing you go and you take some points, okay? So we've got, um, and normally when you say use information from the graph, I tend to use at least two to three. So I've got 100 and that is there, and that's one, two, three, four, four, six. So when A is 100, R equals mm, 6.6 .6 times 10 to the minus 15. Take another point here. I've got one, two, five here. Oh, I'll do this one here. This one's quite nice. So I've got when A equals one, seven, five, R equals eight times 10 to the minus 15. I'm going to pick another one here. What's 150? It's a nice number. Oh, that does look nice. So there's seven. It's much easier when you've got a ruler. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. So 7, 1, 2, 3, so 7.6. So when A equals 150, R equals 7.6 times 10 to the minus 15. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this formula and I'm going to find R naught for each one. So R naught equals R over A to the power of a third. So I'm going to do that for each of those here. So 6.6 .6 times 10 to the minus 13 divided by 100 to the power of 1 over 3. And they get an answer of 1.42 times 10 to the... Oh, minus 15, yeah. Um, so I've got 1.42 uh, times 10 to the minus 15 there. I'm going to do it for the others as well, so equals on this one. So I've got uh, 8 times 10 to the minus 15 divided by 175 to the power 1 over 3. And I get 1.43 times 10 to the minus 15. 
times 10 to the minus 15. And this one, I've got 7.6 times 10 to the minus 15 divided by 150 to the power um, 1 over 3. They get 1.43 again. Or three times 10 to the minus 15. So with these three results, I can say that saying about 1.43, so I'm using to show that 1.4 is on there. So I've used three results. So with three results, you can assume R0 is about. 1.4 times 10 to the minus 15. So when you're using information from the graph, please use what more than one. I try to use three points at least, okay, when you're trying to prove something is this here. So we've got here, show that the radius of uh, a vandium nucleus, I'm not a chemist, I do apologize, is about five times 10 to the minus 15. So I've got R, equals r naught a to the third. I'm going to use the r naught from above. So I've got 1.4 times 10 to the minus 15 times by 51 to the power of a third. Okay, so 51 to the power of a third times by 1.4 times 10 to the minus 15. And I get an answer of 5.19 times 10 to the minus 15 meters, which is approximately five times 10 to the minus 15 meters. Okay. So when you're doing a show, a show that question, you need to show that you can't go backwards. You have to go forwards. Okay. So you get, if I look at the mark scheme for this here, they're saying that using the formula is one mark and getting it at one mark is actually for a, an evaluation okay to actually so that i normally write this kind of thing here so i write the full thing to two decimal places and i said that's approximately that there okay so in a show that question it is important that you not only show that it equals approximately but then actually making a comment going yeah it relates to that Oh, I love this. Calculate the density of a nucleus here. So this is important. Density is mass over volume. The minute you see the word density, you write that down. OK, so I've got mass divided by volume. So it's an appropriate union, unit for your answer. So I know my radius is approximately 5.19 times 10 to the minus 15. OK, I can work out my volume because I'm assuming it's a sphere. Okay, so volume of a sphere is four thirds pi r cubed. So in this case, it's going to be that to the power of three times by pi times by four divided by three. And I get 5.86 times 10 to the minus 43. Okay, so mass, I'm going to, so my mass, I've got 51 nucleons. And they are 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27. Now you could use 1.667, 5 and 3 if for the amount of protons you want. But at this level, um, it's quite, uh, it doesn't really matter. You're just working out a density here. So I've got here, I've got my mass is 51, point, 51 times 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27 all over my volume, which is 5.86 times 10 to the minus 43. So 51 times by 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27 divided by my answer. And I get an answer of 1.44 times 10 to the 17 kilograms per meter cubed. So I'm going to put that here, 1.44 times 10 to the 17 kilograms per meters cubed. If you see the unit line, that implies you have to put the unit and that's worth a mark. And I'll show you here on the mark scheme all the way down here. Ugh. So I've got 1.37. Expect a very large spread of possible answers. I did. I got 1.44 times 10 to the 17. Okay, so I got the... What method did I use? So this one says 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27. Using it here, 1.4 times 10 to the 17. So I got 1.44, okay, depending on where you round. So importantly, you get one mark for the kilogram meters per cubed there. So one mark for the actual method, one mark for the answer, and they're allowing quite a big range. And if you see the word unit, even if you don't know what you're doing, have a go. Okay, so it's kilograms per meters cubed. So that should be a minus sign there. That was my fault there. 
Okay, this is important. You see density, you write the density formula, that will really help you out, okay? So there we have it. This is day 20 of the um, 24-day extravaganza of physics.